hell, hell, by Lynn Lyon Monroe. How dare you make such a suggestion? The state physician, doggedly struck by position. I would not make it, sire. If your life was not at stake, there's no other surgeon in the fatherland who can transplant a preliminary land. But Dr. Lenz, you will operate. The Mercano shook his head. You would die, she would die, leader. My skill is not adequate. Unless the operation takes place at once, you will certainly die. Leader stormed out about the apartment. He seemed almost to give way to one of the girlish bursts of anger. Even the inner state clique feared so much, surprisingly, he capitulated. Bring him here, he ordered. Dr. Lance faced the leader. Inherent dignity, a dignity that presents that three years of protective custody been able to shake the pallor and goatness of the concentration camp lay upon him. His race was used to oppression. I see, he said. Yes, I see. I can form that operation. What are the ter- your terms? Terms? Leader was aghast. Terms? You filthy swine? You're still, you've been given a chance to redeem and part of the sins of your race. The surgeon raises his elbow. Vows. Do you not think I know that you could not would not accept me if there had been any other course available to you? Obviously my service has been valuable come valuable. You do as you're told. You and your kind are lucky to be alive. Nevertheless I shall not operate without my fee. I said you were lucky to be alive. Tom was an even open threat. Then has opened his hands. Well, I am an old man I am an old man. He had a smile true. We have formed that you have a family. The surgeon moistened his lips. Yes, Emily. They would hurt his Emily. His little rose. He must be brave as Emily would, would have been uh, not have him, to be, have him be. Praying for high stakes for all of them. They cannot be worse. They cannot be worse off dead. He answered firmly. But then they, there are many, many, uh, many are now in, in, it was many hours before the leader was convinced that Lance could not be budged. He should have known the surgeon had learned, learned fortitude. His wife's breast, mother's breast. What is your fee, a passport for myself and my family? Good riddance. My daughter's personal official should be stored to me very well. Be paid in gold before I operate. The leader started to object automatically and checked himself quickly. Let the presumptuous fool think so. He could be corrected after operation. The operation to take place in a hospital on foreign soil. Preposterous, I must assist. You do not trust me? Then stared right back at his eyes without replying. The leader struck him hard, across the mouth. The surgeon made no effort to avoid the blow, but took it with no charge of expression. You are willing to go through with it, Samuel? The younger man looked at Dr. Lanz without fear as, a, as he answered. Certainly, Doctor. I could not guarantee that you will cover. The leader primary grand is seized. Well, it's strange it for your healthy one. Your younger one may not be able to stand it up under it, but there's a chance you take. Besides, a complete transplanting had never been done before. I know it. But I'm, but I'm out of the concentration. I knew it, but I'm out of the concentration camp. Yes, that is true. If you do recover, you're free. I tend you to myself you know, until you want well enough to... Travel, Samuel as well. It'd be a positive joy to be stuck in a country with no concentration camps. Very well, then, let's get commence. We returned to the silent, nervous group at the other end of the room. Grimly, the money was counted out. Every penny the famous surgeon laid claim to befold the leader had decided the men of his religion. Had no need for money. Lance placed half of the gold in a money belt, strapped it around his waist. His wife concealed the other half somewhere about a, a, a ample person. It was on an hour and a half, twenty minutes later. Lance put down his last instrument, nodded to the surgeons assisting him, and commenced to strip off operating gloves. He took one last look at his two patients before he left the room. The anonymous under sterile grounds and dressings, he did not know he could not have guessed that Tater from the breasts. Come to think of it, for the strange those two tonic glands, there's enough something of the dictator and his victim, and something of the victim and the dictator. 
Dr. Lairns returned to the hospital later in the day. I was seeing his wife and the doctor. Daughter safely settled in a first class hotel. It is extravagant in view of these uncertain prospects. A refugee, but he enjoyed no luxuries for years back there. He didn't consider his home country. Yeah, but he just felt it once. He inquired the office the, 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 of the hospital for his second patient. The clerk looked puzzled. But he's not here. Not here? Why not? He moved at the same time as he exited back to your country. I did not argue. Trick was obvious. It's too late to do something for poor Hanuel. He thanked his God he had had foresight to place himself and his family beyond the reach of the, such brutal injustice before operating. He thanked the clerk and left. He had recovered unconscious at last. His brain was confused. He recalled events. He had gone to sleep. The operation is over. He was alive. He had been never admitted to anyone. How terribly frightening he had been at the prospect. But he had lived. He had lived. He groped around his bell cord, failing to find it. Gradually forced his eyes to focus on the room. What outrageous nonsense was this? This is no, this is no sort of room for the leader of convalescent. He took the dirty white washed ceiling, a bare wooden floor with his taste, and the bed. No more than a cot. He shouted. Someone came in. A man in wearing a uniform. A trooper in his favourite coats. He stared. Started to give him a, the tongue lashing of his life for uh, having him arrested. But he cut short. Cut the racket. You unholy pig. At first he was so astounded to answer. Then he shrieked. Stand up to attention when you address the leader. Salute. The trooper looked at Burm founded. A sick man so totally dif- different in appearance from the leader. Then guffed. He stepped onto, stepped to the cot, struck a pose, right hand at the raise and salute. He carried a rubber truncheon in it. Howl to your leader. He shouted and brought it his arm down smartly. Truncheon crashed in the sick man's cheekbone. Another trooper came in to see what the noise was while the first was still laughing at the witch's wisdom. What's up, John? Say, you better not hold all that monkey too rough. He still carried on the hospitalist. He glanced casually at the bloody face. Him? Don't you know? John pulled him to one side and whispered. Man, sick as eyes, wide and he grinned. So, they didn't want him to get well, huh? Well, I could use a little size, size, this, use a little size this morning. Let's, let's get fats. The other suggested, always so very amusing. His idea is a good idea. He stepped to the door and bellowed. Hey, fats. He didn't really start on him until fats was here to help.